Ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Marcus here again. I'd like to talk to you today on the subject matter, man's economic system is killing us. Man's economic system is killing us, but God has a better one. Man's economic system is founded on the principles of using money. Money that is required to be used to access all of the resources that are absolutely necessary for your survival outside of the power that we have no control of. For instance, your oxygen that comes from breathing naturally. We had nothing to do with that as far as we know. And your blood that flows through your veins, through your being here, we had nothing to do with that as far as we know. Outside of that part that we do know. But that which we have control of, we have exploited. We have taken it off the principles for which the oxygen operates, for which the blood operates, and put it on a different principle. If it stayed on the same principles of blood and oxygen, then every exercise would be to take, to take from a resource that was given just like oxygen. The resources of the earth were given just like the blood that flows through our veins. And it's there for that which breathes, that which has blood flowing through its veins and how to do it, how to access it and utilize it for the purpose of survival is already given within the individual and the individual uses that to survive, meeting all the physical needs just like the oxygen, just like the blood. That's God's way. And in so doing it, each individual does that which gives them the greatest pleasure. You can't beat it. But over here on the money side, that's the distraction. That's where people hide behind the money. That's where people use the money as bait to capture you so you can have the money. So you can get what you need to survive. So you can feel better and bigger than those who don't have. That's why you have the haves and the have-nots and everybody's struggling to be a part of the haves while I'm Squashing and creating more and more of the have-nots. That's man's way. That's man's way, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just telling you straight up front. That is man's way of doing things. It doesn't matter whether you're under capitalism and democracy. It doesn't matter what form of system of government you're under. The point of the matter is this. That all men have a connection with the power source of life, even though it started with one person, that same connection with that invisible power was generated in such a way that all human beings that walk upon the face of the earth have the same connection that the first man, the first individual had with that power and the power of that spirit. And no man is to be subjected by force of might or law or anything upon the servitude of another. But we as a human species representing one body for one common cause, and that's life. But once we know that, then we will act like that and it will be the evidence of our knowledge of that. To walk any other way is an a statement that whatever you say contradictory to what has just been said is false. It is absent evidence. And without the evidence, we can't say, well, my heart meant this. It's in my heart, baby, no. <laughs> it's not in your heart. It might be in your wishing. It might be in your mind. But it is not in your heart. If it's in your heart, I guarantee your feet will step that way every day toward where the heart directs. 
that's where your soul will go. But I'm trying to tell you, it has evidence. Now, I came to tell you that the economic systems of America are killing us. The economic systems of the world are killing us. What I am basically saying to you, that all of these systems exist by force. None of them are just people just liberally giving glory to them and life to them. It is by force. And even those that appear to be supporting each and everything that it does have problems with it. I said appear. And they're caught up in something, still wishing for something that they don't have. And so this is what, if maybe you just had a little bit of thinking outside the program, you could see. But it is not just about identifying how ugly the world is, because you can't see how ugly the world is unless you understand how beautiful it can be. And once you see how beautiful the earth, America, Minnesota can be, I mean, you look back at the world and it looks like demons. You know the pictures that they have in magazines and on the internet about demons and the devil and all that kind of stuff? When you look back at it like the, at, at, after seeing how beautiful it can be, it looks as ugly as all of that. And there is no way you can give life to that by subjecting yourself to under the authority, the continued authority of ignorance. You can't say, I'm born again. You can't say, I can, I can see now. You can't say, great is he that's in me than he that's in the world and walk into the dictates of the world. <laughs> I mean, a little country boy from Ellis Rogers Laboratory School in Independent Mississippi knows better than that. So you need somebody to tell you that there is another way. And I made, created, saved to be before you at this day and time and say that whether you know it or not, when it comes down to Americans, you know the number one class of people by everybody's thinking. I don't care if you try to deny it or not. The number one class of people by everybody's thinking in the United States of America is the white man, not white folks, is the white man. Why? Because everything is built on the principles of the white man. The economy, the white man. The democracy, the white man. Everything, the white man. If it's good, the white man. If it's bad, the white man. Everything is the white man. That's the way it is. And so, the world that we're living in is an expression of the rule of the white man. And if you looked throughout the places where humans exist and found Chinese man, African man, everywhere you're going to find the same type of man that you find in the white man. But you're also going to find some who are not as vicious as we know the white man to be and others that I have just associated with the white man. But that, anything less, is not good enough. In other words, where heaven abounds, all of the bull has got to go. 
It wasn't allowed in heaven. Lucifer, they say, he had to go with his people. It wasn't allowed in the garden. Adam and his people had to go. And here on earth, where we are finally waking up, and we're saying that all of that ugliness has got to go. The white man has produced, out of all the ruling time, has produced its best, its best in the White House today is Donald Trump. That is the best that the white man has to offer. And you know what they said about this man on his way to the White House. And you know who said it about him. But it didn't stop him from coming. And all of those who talked about him and put him down seemed to be walking in stride with him. That's the best America had to offer. And why does it mean so much to say that? It's because America is what we see. America is Donald Trump. America is the ugliness that we see. The hatred, the bigotry, all of that is America. You say, well, I don't hate. It's not good enough. What is your hating? What is your not hating doing? How is it impacting getting rid of hate? What do you say? I'm not a bigot. I'm not a racist. But you're not being. What is the impact on getting rid of? So whatever you ain't, it ain't good enough. If you're not a racist, then you got to express the fact that racist got to go. And racist not being ended just because you stopped. So what good is America to have white people who are not so racist? Does it stop racism? What good is America to have some people, some white people, who believe in justice and fairness and economic justice? What good is it? Is it getting rid of poverty and crime and violence that comes from that? So if it's not, then all of America is phony as a $2 bill. All of America is as phony as Donald Trump. All of America, all of it, unless you're getting rid of it, you're putting up with it. And if you're putting up with it, you're saying it's okay. And to say it's okay is because you don't know the beauty of God's way. And so this is what I'm trying to take my time to share with you, ladies and gentlemen. I've been put here to share with you this. And I've been even seeking support from the people from the state of Minnesota to put me in as the next senator from the state of Minnesota as a write-in, indicating I'm not uh, committed to Republicans or Democrats or any of that other stuff. I'm so committed to God. I'm to committed to what God is like. God is like everybody. Justice, beauty, heaven. That's what God is for. And that's what I'm for. And I'm hoping that Minnesota can wake up and be for the same thing and send me to Washington. So while I can be a senator in Washington, I can be still speaking to the people of the country. And if the people of the country want to give me a different platform to speak to the rest of the nation and to the rest of the world as we change America, and I'm talking about change. This system has got to change. This system has got to go. This system is of men, men absent the love of God. Men absent the love of God. You think Trump, I even think, <laughs> hey, I heard the angelicals and the fundamentalists were right in stride with Donald Trump. That means that all the stuff, all the ugliness that you see Donald Trump for, people who say they love God seem to be for the same stuff. 
obviously. And so why? Because it's all a part of man. God is love. God is love. The only thing, when, when I say God got to wipe that out of, out there, all that ugliness, I'm not talking about destruction in the sense that man talks about destruction. No, my friend. I'm talking about ignoring to the degree that you have no obedience to it whatsoever. And what you're doing is that you're changing things to make sure that health care is available for everybody, that education is available for everybody, to make sure that food, clothing, and shelter is available for everybody, and to make sure that none of this is denied anybody. Everybody got a job of their own choosing to give them the greatest joy so they can engage themselves in the creative process. And nobody, nobody can see themselves any bigger, better, or anything than any other man, but not only that, neither can they see themselves in their list. And so God is glorified because it is God's glory that is being generated. And the people who are in darkness, who are living in pain and suffering, who are living in crime and violence, see this new way and say, Phew! do like the prodigal son. Say, I'm going back home. Because that's what? That's a star on the hill up there. And I think I came from that. And I'm going to see if I can find my way back home. And so all of a sudden you start seeing that darkness dissipate, getting smaller and smaller because they can see the light. And they're walking toward the light. They ain't dying. They're not dying and transferring from one life to another life when they see the light. No, they are alive. And they see the light. They see the light of peace. They see the light of prosperity. They see the light of joy. They've always seen it. But now it's different. It was always in the past for others. But now it's for them. And it's for everybody around them. And so no one is stumbling over each other. Everybody's excited about their own life because their own life is cooked up and connected to everybody's life. Why? Because that's the way joy is. Joy is unlimited and unabound. Joy is just like that. So I'm just telling you about God's way. I thought I'd give God a little praise this morning. And uh, hopefully that uh, I might have just helped somebody. In the meantime, this once again is Eddie Marcus, spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for all people, basically saying that I'm God's man, speaking what God has given me to say. I didn't say I was a perfect man, so stop trying to look at me and think that you can find something on me. God, you don't have to look that far. I played with the devil just like everybody else. And I got a devil's record just like everybody else. And I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed to tell you that I did it. And I'm not ashamed. Why? Because I know why. I know why. That's the way we were trained. We were born into the stuff. All of us are raggedy, 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 stinging rags when it comes down to the beauty of God. And so I know that. I know that my rags were mighty stinky, and they probably got some steel stink on it, but I'm wise enough, my friends, to say yes to God. And that's why I'm here, saying to you, try God, because man is crazy. Bye-bye. <laughs>